Welcome to the Gen Z Journey, where we work with you through an entrepreneurial lens to build a wholesome perspective on life and build both our business and personal dreams together. Join our community on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Gen Z Journey. So, hello and welcome to another Gen Z Journey podcast. You're here today with us, with me hosting, with Aaron, and we're here with a very special guest of Nathan. Uh, we'll introduce him in, in one minute, but like I always say at the start of these podcasts, it's a, it's a get, guest podcast. We want you to get to know um, who our guest is and, and just really get to know their background, get to know what they're doing now, and then kind of project that into the future of, of where they want to go. Um, so we'll, we'll share some cool stories along the way, have a bit of fun, uh, like always, but without further ado, Nathan, could you just give us a little introduction of, of who you are? Absolutely, guys. And first and foremost, thank you for having me on the podcast. I'm really looking forward to having a chat today. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night around the world. So thank you very much. And let me just, just take a few moments just to tell you who I am, where I've come from, and who I am up to this moment in time. So, um, gosh, from England, UK, um, right in the middle of England, Stoke on Trent. A little, I was going to say a little, it depends on how you look at it, but a, a, a nice little city, Stoke on Trent, right in the middle of um, England. Um, all grown up there, my family from there, and grandparents from Jamaica. Um, so, really, really great time growing up, differences and, you know, obstacles to overcome. Um, when I'm going through school, I um, always wanted to be a doctor. I don't know why I chose that, but I always wanted to be a doctor for some, for some unknown reason. So, as you do grow through school, fantastic with biology, chemistry, all, all, all the sciences. Got to college, you know, it's picked psychology and biology as part of my A-levels, going on this doctor's course that I wanted to be. And then as soon as I was ready to go to university, um, change my mind. And if you actually ask me the reason why, I, I couldn't put my finger on it. I've, I've tried to go back to so many times, but just randomly, I was like, okay, so I've, I've, I've prepared myself to be a doctor and I've got the opportunity now. And I just randomly changed my mind. I wanted to do economics. Um, but all the time throughout school, like, you know, I used to do a lot of plays, a lot of media, um, a lot of, um, you know, speaking and, and speech and all of those different areas so i was quite active great with people loved being on the stage as well um so i've gone from being a doctor to going to university studying economics and then at the side doing lots and lots of you know shows small shows um small tv shows commercials things like that um a random smorgasbord of different things just being merged into one um went through university which was great i was i was in manchester and graduated from there um with economics and then at that point i was thinking okay wow um i i'm here now what do i want to do you know going to finance and again once again i changed my mind and so you know i've got to prepare myself for this area and i changed my mind and at that moment i wanted to do almost something in relation to drama you know, and I wanted to express myself and to be on the stage. So I did a lot of shows. Um, I went to places like Orton Towers and did shows there. I did plays, theatre, all those different things as well. And I really, really enjoyed it. It was fantastic. It was wonderful. Um, and then there was two things when I was doing that that changed my life um, and changed my focus on where I'm going to be. Um, the first thing, um, I, had my, I had my first child, my little boy. Um, quite young, I was, I was 20, 22 at the time. Um, when my partner was 22, obviously I didn't have the baby at 22 myself. Um, and then <laughs> the second thing was um, an accident. I had an accident, so I um, had an accident with my back and he put me on crutches for 18 months. So I was always an active person, you know, on my feet, proactive, and I had an accident and yeah, it, really, you know, it was a bad accident with my back. I couldn't walk 18 months on crutches. It, it, it was a bad time. And I had to, at that point, reinvent myself. So I always think at that moment of time, if anything, I always look back, and hopefully we'll touch on this a bit later, but at that point, I believe in my life, I was at times when I should have been really in a jubilant situation when I'm having a baby on the way. I was very extremely low because I've gone from being proactive and running and doing all sorts of different things and, you know, bedridden and not being able to walk and being quite young, seeing all my friends being able to do stuff it was very demoralizing but I had to change my mind and my, my focus and my mindset to then become uh, obviously to provide i've got a child child on the way i've got to change and that's when 
you know, I use that time to obviously get myself better and refocus and, and do more learning and really focus on where I want to be. Um, and then I came through that, came onto my feet, started walking and I got a job in finance because I needed a straight career where I thought to myself, right, I'm going to have that focus now. I can't be self-employed and moving around. I need to have that clear laser focus, what I had. And I, um, I moved to Barclays and I started Barclays as what we call a personal banker. Um, and I loved it because I was able to be a bit different in how I approached and understand people because I really enjoy helping people. That's something that I really do, do love. And everything that's changed my mind, it doesn't matter because everything I choose to go into is always helping people. And that's one of the key things. I only realise now what's one of my true values. Um, so I loved helping people and listening and, and realising where their problems are and, and making those better. So being a personal banker, that really helped. And I was able to build a great client base and you know do really well within that um, at Barclays. And then I was promoted through that time there and um, moved up to what they call Premier and then Premier and another level above that and it was fantastic and I do really well um, but I wanted to improve myself so this is when during those times I was still doing I was doing my exams on the side of working so I was working coming home looking after my boy doing all the other stuff with every back revise and to ensure that I could become a, a full fully fledged what you call financial advisor um, and I passed all of my exams which was wonderful but at that time um, Barclays stopped doing um, what financial advice, well, regulated, um, regulated financial advice at that moment due to everything that happened um, at that moment in time in the industry. And I was almost again a bit stuck, all that work, and then there was no job at the end of it. So I thought to myself, I've got to almost take a bit of a step back to go forward again. And I was looking for jobs, but nobody really wanted someone who was what they call new to the industry. And they wanted experienced financial advisors that have been doing it for 10, 15 years. Nobody wanted someone who's just done all their exams, even though, you know, I probably got the more knowledge because I'm, I'm fresh and it's in my mind. And eventually I got a job with Prudential. And yeah, it was a couple of steps backwards in relation to pay and grades and everything like that. Um, but I was able to learn so much. And, you know, it was almost like a big J curve where I literally I joined straight down and I was thinking what on earth have I done I've left Barclays where I'm growing something fantastic to somewhere a place where now I've just I thought I knew everything I actually know nothing it's completely different oh my gosh and I was able to go through that again and build my way up and um, I'm a partner at, at Prudential and, and doing really well I love it and again it's with being able to help people in different ways which is wonderful and, and, and that's just a quick overview of where I am today Rio. Yeah that's that's excellent and there's so much to touch on there and I can't wait to kind of dig into it all um, and I'm sure I'm sure that for our UK listeners this will be the first thing they picked up from is the fact that you are from the UK um, and uh, so that's that's do you I think you are our second UK guest which is awesome and I think something somewhere around about 40% of our audience is from the UK so it's uh, great that we can we can get you on um and uh and and so the first thing i kind of wanted to touch on in in that uh, background of you uh, was your kind of college slash university and and kind of afterwards experience you know there was a there's a lot of change from from what i heard from you and um and you you can't you can't quite pinpoint why but that's really cool i wanted to touch on that and just kind of dig a bit deeper into uh, why why those changes occurred and and what what were you what were you chasing what motivated that difference and, and that change in your decisions um, I think that'd be interesting for people to kind of get a hold of yeah I, I genuinely yeah I think in relation to that I think when when you when I was a lot younger and I wasn't aware of maybe my thoughts and my processes and how to deal with things I think it could be down to a lot more influence you know so when you think that you believe you want to be something, is it your true belief that you want to be something? Or is it somebody else's belief that's been pushed onto you and you think that's what you want to do? And that's probably something that's what happened to me probably twice because I genuinely thought that I wanted to be a doctor. And, you know, the more I, I said, I don't know why I changed, but the more I think about it, and, you know, over the years, I clearly didn't want to do it or. I would never have changed, you know, I'm, I, 
I'm aware of that. I have my choice. So the opportunity was there. Well, I didn't do it just for the sake of doing it or, or to annoy myself and go, ha, Nathan, you didn't do it. You know, I, I, so clearly, I just, it was something in, in myself where, you know, that gut, that, in, that innate feeling that you have inside of you, almost like a calling where actually, you know, this isn't what you want to do. What do you want to do, Nathan? You know, and I think that could be what, what it is. It could have been, I was influenced, not in a negative way, you know. And sometimes when you look at influence, some people automatically assume influence is a negative thing rather than a positive. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It could have been somebody, you know, family, friends, teachers, thinking they're doing the right thing for me, thinking, oh, actually, Nathan, you would be a good person doing this. And then all of a sudden you're younger. Oh, okay, yeah, well, why don't you do that? And then you'll become good at it. You get praised at it. And then you think that's what you want to do. So I think that could be it. Um, I know I've always, and again, I touched on it, I always want to deal with people because I enjoy the fact of helping people. And I think that for me is a, a core value in everything that I want to do. So the fact is, if I help somebody, I feel complete in what I've done. So that's something as big as, changing a retirement option to achieve what they want to do or just opening a door for somebody do you see what i mean i have Absolutely. a question on that actually so i i feel the same way you know i for me i've learned very quickly on that the only times i feel satisfied is when i'm advocating for people and helping them with something and so that's always been something that i pursue i started pursuing that um through community service when i was younger and then i uh, started pursuing that in my career choices and what i did in college um, so for you, um, what, why, why does it satisfy you? And uh, when did you figure that out? So again, on reflection, I think it's the fact that a, a whole family base of how I've seen people help each other at moments in time when you think nobody else is going to help you. So I've seen so many things and so many stories. I've seen family help family. I've seen friends help family. I've seen people, you know, when they're at the lowest of the low and somebody's helped them and brought them almost I'm going to say almost back from the dead and and seeing that has made me think wow people are great you know people are amazing and I want to be amazing I want to be that person where if I walk out of a room it's like gosh the room's better if I am a part of someone's life I want to make their life better and I think that's the mentality for growth because if I my my mentality is okay every day how can I make it better for myself yes but for others because if I make it better for others that's going to go get in and get spread around the world so something so small me picking up something for somebody or somebody struggling with a bag or can I help you that immediately makes another person happier and then they're going to be happier to the next person and to the next person do you see what I mean? If I can, if somebody's really worried and stressed about something and they think, oh my gosh, I can't get out of this situation. And I break it down and say, well, actually you can, but you have to do this and we have to do this and there's going to be a sacrifice here. But if you do that, you will get out of this situation. So imagine giving someone life at that moment in time to get out of the situation and change their life. How many other people does that affect in a positive way? So I might not even meet the people that it's affected, but because I've done something here, it's affected other people in a positive way. And that's all I want to do. I always want to leave things better. I think that's the best way to do it. Even though you know, you're going to get annoyed and upset and angry at times. But as long as you can reflect and make things better, I think you can't really go wrong from there. I love that's it. Awesome. And that's uh, That's actually what I like to compare that to uh, in the finance world is actually compound interest. You know, you start, you start with a small amount of things, but all those small decisions and all those small uh, choices that you make really start to compact and they, they accumulate. And before you know it, you have a big impact. You know, for me, I, I like to help people in small ways all the time on the daily basis. You know, like yesterday, I was actually at Rite Aid and someone was short 70 cents on one of their purchases and you could see um, that they didn't have much money but they were just trying to buy food and I you know the guy went to the cashier and the cashier told him he was 70 cents short and uh, he, he couldn't buy it and he was buying it with food stamp money and I was like dude let me help you and so I was like no worries I got you I'll pay the difference and I paid the difference for him and his face when he when he got the money from me was like 
it, he was endlessly grateful and he said thank you so many times and I you know it made their day and that me making their day means that whoever they interact with their day is also going to be made because they're going to be happy and the next person's going to be happy and that that idea of compound interest is you know that it can, your choice is compounding and creating uh, that ripple effect is just amazing that there's certainly uh, a lot to be said for for just positivity spreading positivity throughout someone's day um i, I that's that's something something definitely that people can can kind of uh take away from and it's really interesting you guys drawing that that comparison between kind of economics and then just social interaction as well I've, i'm studying um, economics over the summer for my two of my classes i've got to do for my um, for my major is is in economics and they're just introductory courses but i'm really starting to see that that connection between you know society and, and economics it's, it's the study of our behavior and, and what we're doing right um and so yeah that's that's really cool to see those different concepts like you said compound interest and a bunch of other ones kind of playing out it's in socially as well i love to see that um it's, it's it's kind of really exciting to see those concepts being lived out by people um but uh yeah definitely and one thing nathan we've we've got to clear up i should have cleared it up earlier so you're from stoke but th there's there's a, a an amalgamation of a bunch of different different accents in there and you've got to clean it up for people where where are the influences <laughs> coming from like <laughs> so originally i am stoke born and bred yeah so that is me genuinely inside um you're gonna have bits obviously from the, the different schools different areas i've got a bit of manchester i believe and um, because i'm manchester for a bit parts of liverpool but only some words because at some points in my life i used to think i was a scouser um so <laughs> you, you know I, I don't know why again all the change puberty must have been um and then parts of Ch a little bits of chester um and then i would say pop not a lot but some words from London so then I put them all in a cauldron and mixed them up and now I sound like this so yeah as long as you can understand me put I was going to say you might have to send like some kind of like text out to some people if you can't understand me or something like that you know <laughs> send an email with, with the transcript on for <laughs> no I'm sure that'll be fine that was one th that was one of the first things we said when we had the conversation I was trying to work out where in the UK is this guy from and like I couldn't quite work it out but and literally, I'll be talking. I'll, oh, yeah, he's from Stoke, and then I'll say something else. Is he from Liverpool? And then I'll be talking. No, he's definitely Manchester. Yeah, okay. that, that's exactly oh, oh, my thought process. That was exactly it. That was crazy. My thought, my thought process isn't as cool, guys. Mine's just like, wow, that guy's from the UK. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant, oh, man. Um, but before I get into kind of the next podcast question, I want to ask you as well. What's what's your football team? Oh, so I, I, I don't randomly because it's hundreds of miles away, but I support Arsenal. I always have um, from when I was about four, and I, I thought Ian Wright scored a goal, and it just stuck in my mind. Ian Wright, and everyone was Ian Wright, right, right, and it was just for me at that moment in time. I was like, gosh, Arsenal was great, and I, at that time they had like um, look, I had this t-shirt, I had this football kit now, and looking at it, it's horrible. It was sponsored by JVC, it was like yellow with green bees on it kind of thing and i used to love that i thought really yeah and obviously now it looks terrible it's velvet and all stuff but yeah but, and i just loved arsenal obviously grew with what with arsenal from that point but you know before anybody started shooting me down of course i follow Stoke <laughs> my city i'm from Stoke city if we won today so you know, it was great. We got battered 5 0 by Leeds the other day, but we won 2 0 today. So I think by the skin of our teeth, we'll stay up in the championship and we can rebuild. Um, but yeah, I have to say, also on my main team, but I do follow my home team as well. And um, yeah, we won today 2 0. We got battered the other day 5 0 by Leeds, but I believe we're going to stay up in the championship this season and then we can just build up next year or next season. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's an important part of, of a character in the UK, I think. <laughs> yeah, 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 gosh. It's, it's like, what football team do you support? Before anything else, forget, forget your CV. Who do you yeah. support? <laughs> <laughs> it is. First interview question. <laughs> 
Brilliant. Okay, so my next kind of is kind of leading onto that. It's a sort of a segue, but it's I'm going to ask you what are some key either experiences or individuals in your life that have kind of influenced your thinking? They can be friends or family members, or they can be you know Cristiano Ronaldo, whoever it is. Okay, okay. So people close to my heart. I've got to say, um, I'm very, very exceptionally lucky to have a strong woman in my life, which is my mother. Um, exceptionally lucky and that's something only when I've got a bit older older like I'm really I'm not really old I'm just saying as a <laughs> okay. um, it's made me realise how wonderful and how lucky I've been so that for me has been such a, a foundation having somebody that looking back now did so much that at the time I did not realise how important that stuff was um so you know my mom doing that work ethic i was talking about my mom doing double shifts at the hospital working days picking me up from school dropping me to my nans and then going out for nights two hours later i just obviously didn't see that kind of stuff um but obviously now it's something which is really implemented I'm being lucky, so I have to I have to say the first person is is my mother, because it's someone who's always been there at every time, even when I haven't been so grateful to have it. Went, again, when I was younger and didn't realise, it's always been there and always put sacrifices, but subconsciously, and this is where it goes a bit crazy. Subconsciously, somehow, this lady has implemented stuff in my mind that I wasn't even aware of and made me focus on things and just want to be great and provide for people and be a genuinely nice person to other people. So subconsciously, she, you know, she says all this stuff, but it, it's gone into my mind at some point, so I've got to thank her. And, and at the times, obviously, everybody goes through bad times, but I, I always draw back to that accident. And there's one, there was one thing that my mum said to me at that moment in time, when obviously I was very young, I had my boy was coming, as I said, I, you know, I was young, I had no plan, um, I have a really bad, um, sorry guys, I have a really bad um, back accident with my back, really bad, so I'm obviously, that. so I can't, the emotion at that point is just immense and down, you almost feel like that's it, I'm done, what else am I supposed to do? And mum said to me, she goes, Nathan, and this sticks in my head, okay, and I, I, I think I use it as one of my um, one of my quotes on LinkedIn quite recently. She says, uh, falling into the water doesn't kill you, staying there does. And I thought that, I thought, what? And she said, falling into the water doesn't kill you, staying there does. And I thought, well, yeah, but the more you think about it, it's right. So if anything happens to you in a bad way, if you, if you can't swim and you fall into the water, you don't hit the water and all of a sudden drown. It's you staying in that water that causes a problem. But if you can do something to get out or move or swim out, that's going to give you some more time or get you into a safer and better place. And you can relate that back in the time. So if at that moment in time, if I didn't click to what she was saying to me, I would have stayed at that point, that low point. And I'm not saying I would have died in there, but I wouldn't be out of that horrible hole that I, I was in. So I had to actually realise what hole I'm in and find myself a way out by doing something different because sitting there and not focusing and feeling sorry for myself isn't going to get my back better, isn't going to make me be able to provide, isn't going to make me a great person as in to others, it's not going to make me a great father figure. It's not going to do that. So I have to do something different, of which I did. So she's one person. Um, and then other people, you know, we spoke about it, didn't we? You know, your general sports people and uh, you people that I grow. But I think at this moment, a person that I'm just really amazed by what, what they do is, I, I said to you earlier, is um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I just feel he is just the epitome of laser focus, determination, humble, respectful, like works great with people, understands people, listens, 
and just keeps on going. So if he fails, he takes a look at that failure. What did I do that fail? Why did it fail? Let me take all the positives from that and move on to the next. And let me make sure nobody else makes that mistake behind me as well. And I think that there is just absolutely fantastic because that's what I try to do in the fact where if I make a mistake, let me try and, and fix that so other people don't have to go through that. You know, they may make a mistake themselves at another level, but let's not make them make that silly mistake there. Um, and I think that's what he does. So the different areas, I've got my mum on this side and then I've got the rock on this side, two completely different people, completely different. Yeah, but yeah, I would say those are, those are the two initially, I would say, if I, you know, from family to someone who's who's famous and celebrity. It's funny that you say your mom, Nathan, because I, I've started to feel like that a lot of the times with my own mother. Um, is the the more I grow up, the more I realize the small things that, again, going back to your compound interest, it was the small decisions, the small choices that my mother made, and the things that she told me, the things that she did on her time to help me, or, or without even me realizing she was helping me, and it was those small choices that really became the the big impact on my life, and what really molded me to become who I am. And so that, that idea of all these small things that your mother did when you were younger that you didn't realize and then coming into uh, later in the day uh, or later in the years in your life is really amazing. And I started to realize that pretty much the last two years of how much my mother has done for me and all the small little choices she's made to really just make sure that I was successful in whatever I wanted to do. Mm, and make you believe that like, you can do it. You know, I mean, that's it because you go through so many barriers and people tell you that a lot more people will tell you you can't do something than people will tell you that they can, you can do something. For, and that, again, that's human nature. For some reason, we are easy to put people down rather than build people up. And, and it's funny, and it all roots from the beginning, actually. If you think about when a baby is born, when a child is born, all you tell them when they're born is no, no, no. You always say no, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. And that that kind of builds into the brain when you're younger too, that, that what you're doing is most likely wrong and you should always be scared of what you're going out to do. And that that's not a good mindset because as you grow older, then you bring that mindset into your career, you bring that mindset into your daily life and you're like, no, that's too risky. No, I don't wanna start a business because it, there's too many risk factors to it. No, I don't want to um, go out there and learn a new skill because I'm probably going to fail at it anyways. And that, that idea of the no, no, no just becomes very overwhelming to people. Yeah, it is. You're absolutely right. And it's just it's like a can't mentality when people say, I can't, without asking why. You know, I can't do that. Or why? Why can't you do that? I just can't. Yeah. Well, you know, but ask yourself genuinely, why I can't? I, I, I don't know. I just, I just can't. Well, have you tried? Have you tried? No. So how do you know you can't? I just do. <laughs> you know? I tell you the best example of this, the best example of these is, um, and, and I, don't, I don't know why, but it's people with food. Okay. I've always come across this depending on people's mentality, right? And it, this is just a weird, weird thing. I mean, it's not, it's not a generalization. It's not all people, but I tend to get on with people that love their food, all types of food, whatever it is, they'll try something that whatever, they'll just, they love their food because then that's their mentality in life. I am not, I am not joking. Now, if you put something in front of them that they've never had before, like, like, a, when I came here, there was some American food and I was like, I've not really had this before, but let's, let's try it. This seems cool. Um, and when you do that with, with people, that's normally their mentality towards life as well. So you put a bit of food in front of them, it's like, they've never had that before, ah, I'm not gonna have that. Well, why not? It's like, ah, oh, I don't think I like it. It's like, you haven't tried it yet, have you? It's like, no, 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 but I just don't think I like it. Because they just look at it and they, they don't wanna try that new thing. Um, and, and that's something I've noticed. It's just, it's just a funny occurrence in my life. It's just people and, people and food. It can tell us a lot, I think. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. It's a, it's a comfort zone thing, isn't it? You, you, you comfort eat. That's what it's called, comfort eating. So you're going to comfort eat on what you know makes you feel comfortable and what you know you like. So why are you going to come out of your comfort zone when you're comfort eating to try something different? You're not going to because your mind thinks, well, actually, Nathan, 
you love this cheesecake. Why on earth would you want to go to the gatto? Go to the gatto. You don't know what the gatto is, but you know this cheesecake makes you feel good. You know. So again, with life, you know, exactly. with Nathan, you might not be happy in your job, but it's paying your mortgage, it's paying your bills, and you've got a job there for the rest of your life. Why would you try and improve? Why do you want to do that? Just stay here. You're comfortable. You know. You know everybody. You're going to have a, um, a pension when you're done. Just stay here. And you're comfortable. But outside of that comfort zone, well, that fear when it's saying out there is there's fire and brimstone and it's raining acid out there. Don't go outside. Well, actually, you step out and it, there's no acid out here and there's no fire. There's nobody trying to shoot guns at me. Okay. It's actually the same place. Oh, you know, so it might be a bit harder. You know, the water fountain might be a bit further away. Well, I can see it in the distance and it works. So let's go, let's go out there. Let's step out, it's free. You know, and that, that's how it is. You're right, the analogy of food to just try things in life, stepping out of your comfort zone is, is real true, yeah. Can I actually bring in a quote that I, that I uh, read yesterday? Uh, I, was, I, I was reading a, pretty much a transcript to a TED talk and someone said, there's two types of pain. There's the pain of uh, regret and there's the pain of, uh, of discipline. And pretty much the pain of discipline is the idea of you're willing to try new things, you're willing to go out there, you're willing to put in the effort into things that make you uncomfortable, that, that might give you that temporary pain, but ultimately will give you a pleasure because it, it, it's a pain that is actually good for you. And then there's the pain of regret, and that pain of, the, of regret is that idea of you're, gonna, you're not going to try things ever and you're always scared and you don't want to go out of your comfort zone, but eventually you feel a different pain and you feel that pain of, oh, why didn't I try that? Why didn't I do that 10 years ago? Why didn't I do that 20 years ago? And so it's like, which pain do you want to feel more of in the moment? Do you want to feel that pain of trying new things and feeling better in the long term? Or do you want to feel that, that pain 20 years down the line because all you wanted to do was stay in that comfort zone? No, you're right. And I, I, a quick one. This, this complete, I, when I was at Disney about three years ago, um, the, you know, Summit Plummet um, and Blizzard Beach, the water park, they've got that slide and it's literally a straight vertical slide um, at Blizzard Beach. Summit, Summit Plummet, it's called. And this, honestly, I was so scared to go on this thing and I was thinking, Nate, just don't go on it. You know, it's ridiculous. And, but I thought to myself, you know, I've got to go on this, I've got to go on this slide because if I don't, I'm going to feel like I've missed out, the fear of missing out. So I've gone up and you go up and it, it, you're, you're at the top and you went down. And I kid you not, it's the first time in my life where a scream has come from my belly, from my stomach, through my chest. Into my, and my scream was like this. Uh, that was my scream. Not, not unusual. Uh, it was, uh, I like a soul leaving my body. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. And I came down and I've done it and I thought to myself, you know what? I've experienced it now. It was oh it was great. Would I do it again? No, because I know how it feels. It's not if I do it again, it's not going to change. But I've experienced it. And that's exactly what you say. If I didn't go on it, how many times am I gonna say so I'm gonna hear somebody go, Oh, I've been on the ride and it was amazing. I'm gonna feel like I missed out and that regret pain, like exactly like you said. But the fact is now I've you know, I bit the bullet, I've done it. I didn't it was I didn't really like it. I was, I was, I was scared, senseless. Um, but at least I've experienced it, you know. And I, again, I try to, all I do, I do put that in everything that I approach in life. Because I believe if you can try something and look at the positives in it, then you will find a way out of the situation. Regardless of what you're in, there's always a way out. It's either the front door, the back door, trap door, side door. That, you know, you could be backed against the corner and there's some way out. Somebody's going to help you. You're going to help yourself. you just got to look at it and try your different options. So, yeah, it, it relates back. Everything I do say relates back to, to life and how you should be. Yeah, I really love your, I really love your, your mentality, Nathan. I think people can learn a lot from that. And just like you said, I think it started at a, at a very young age from your, from your mother. And then just instilling some of that that mentality into you, and just when why I wanted to pick on on those those changes of decisions and where you wanted to go in your life when you were younger, is like just I, I believe you were doing that very much out of kind of like you said a bit of influence, but also um what what made you happy and and what what you enjoyed and and you know that's quite I would say quite a rare um 
thing to have in someone's mentality is just really chasing that enjoyment and value in in your life and then also by extension into other people's lives yeah um so i i think that's uh, that's so cool I, I really love to to hear that and i think it's going to be really valuable to to our listeners and so let me bring that that all of that experience that you've learned and, and all of that into the present now um, of, of kind of where where you're at in terms of your job and, and what you're doing now and, and kind of how all of those experiences has influenced where your mind is, is at now on your journey. Yeah, so all of those things fit in really well at the current because I, I genuinely believe everything that you've learned is wonderful. You've got to continue moving. You can't stay still. You can't stay stagnant. You've got to continue learning. And what I believe, I try and speak to as many people as possible because I think the best way of learning is, is speaking to as many people as possible because I guarantee every single person you speak to will teach you something new. And that's the fact, or you'll learn something new from that person at some, at some point. So you're taking up, you're taking good things, bad things, positive things, normal things, anything that you want to do. So I, I try to do that now at this moment, so I to speak to as many people as possible and bring that into my work. So there's been a lot of changes in relation to how we work, obviously everything that's going on in the world. Um, we're, we're doing this now on Zooms and all sorts of, not that I would have flown out to you guys, but I mean, you know, it's um, everything's on meetings now, isn't it? And how things are. Um, but adjusting from, you know, I was very face to face. Um, with my meetings, so face to face with my meetings, going out to see clients, um, going to their homes, places of work, doing all those different things. And then to all of a sudden, one week being able to see people to, to the one week, well, actually, we're going to stop this now. You can't see people, you're going to have to use video advice. Now, I embrace digital technology, I think it's fantastic. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But overall, your technology is, is wonderful. It's what's going to lead the world, or well, it is leading the world, it's going to take us to the next level in our enhancement, in our evolution moving forward. Um, but the adjustment of that takes a lot. And I, I you know, I, I spoke about this at work where for some reason, because I was doing a video meeting, I went through a week or two where I thought I needed to change who I am, how I do things, you know, how I say it. But I was, wasn't getting the results from there. So I thought, you know, what, what, am, I, what am I doing wrong here? Because I can speak to people. I love people, like you know, I love helping people. So what's going wrong? And I was able to draw on those experiences, look at what's wrong, what's going on at this moment in time. Am I making things better? If not, then what am I doing? What's going wrong? And I was able to realise for some reason, I just assumed that being a video meeting was different to speaking to somebody. Normally, I just put that barrier up. It was just that fear. All of a sudden, I put, well, it's different. Well, yes, technically, if you look at the technicalities of it, yes, it is different. I'm not in front of somebody, and some people may prefer a face to face meeting, but essentially, I can see you now. I can see I, I'm still speaking to you, and you are still people. You're looking back at me, and I'm still the person. You can see my expressions and everything. So, just Nathan, be who you are in your meetings. And once I realized that, everything started to click again and flow and go a bit go better. And it was just Again, it's when you try and adjust in the wrong way, which isn't you, which can cause problems, but you've got to be aware of that. Um, so I adjusted by being myself, if that makes sense, and reevaluating the wrongs, what was going through there. Um, also, in relation to learning, um, I keep learning all the time. So I'm doing a lot of exams and, and growth. And what I always do, I believe, to get better, you have to speak to the people that are above you, say, for instance. So, you know, you're the CEOs of companies, you'll, you'll speak to di um, associate directors, you'll speak to business owners, and you'll speak to all these people to say, okay, what have you done? Well, how are you where you are at this moment in time? And in the back of your mind, you're thinking, because I want to be where you are in the future. And it gives you... A, a beautiful fat flight path. So I always say that you, you speak to people and, and learn from other people as well. Um, because that's a real key, key thing. I, and I just wanted to, to speak on that, you know, exactly what we're doing here uh, with, with me and Aaron and, and yourself, you know, um, 
we we're, we're trying to learn from you in in a, in a mindset sense and like that i i see you as having just more years of experience and, and and much more wise in that sense of your mindset and, and the way you approach things and so trying to take as much as you from you as i can because in the back of my mind i'm going yeah i want to have a lot of the mindset that this guy has and i think that's really cool and you know, that's what we try and convey through this podcast as well is that if if someone finds a lot of the people that we bring on are just further ahead in that journey of, of entrepreneurship or they're just beginning out on that journey looking to learn more as well so as a community you know we want people to be able to learn and take from the community but then also bring back and be like oh i really love that or you know i'd love to get in contact with that person and 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 just build up another relationship with them just create those connections and just have a platform for people to to really interact like that i think is just so so powerful um and and just like you said really based off of that idea of these people are ahead of me i want to be like them how can i learn to be to be like that you know um and and my next question around that for you is so you've been a, a, fina- a financial advisor for how many years now? um i've been a financial advisor for five years worked in finance gosh for over 10 years now yeah it's a long time <laughs> one of the questions i have for you on that is for seeing kind of younger generations now and how they're educated do you, do you feel that i know it's something that i certainly do and, and aaron did as well is that i felt that there was definitely a gap in my my knowledge and understanding of finance when i was leaving college and um finishing a levels and stuff there, there wasn't that same understanding as, as which i i need to develop now um as you become an adult and do you think there is that kind of gap in our education of, of younger people being taught about you finance? Know what? that's it it's a wonderful question and something that i've also tried to address at Barclays and also separate, separately in the community. Um, short answer to that is most definitely. Um, I cast my mind back to finance, learning finance, and what do you know? You, you know, you, 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 I, I could tell you all the algebra, I could work out an algebra formula, but I couldn't tell you what a credit card is. I couldn't tell you what compound interest is. I couldn't tell you how to get a mortgage or what a mortgage rate is. But if you want to know about Pythagoras, I can tell you anything about that or the Tudors and the Stuarts. You know, when no, no, nobody, nobody has ever asked me, Nathan, tell me a question. Tell me something about the Tudors and Stuarts. Nobody, nobody's asked me that. Nobody has ever asked me in a meeting, gone, stop, Nathan, before we start, so I can test your credentials. Tell me something about the Vikings. Nobody. So I'm not saying we don't need to learn this. Hey, hey, Nathan! Tell me, tell me the, tell me the seven wives of Henry the <laughs> Eighth. <laughs> ridiculous! I, for some reason, if you told me to draw Anne Boleyn, I remember doing it in school and thinking, "Why am I doing this?" I could actually draw Anne Boleyn now. Um, it doesn't make sense why I should have this knowledge in my brain, but I have for some reason. You know, um, it just doesn't make sense. But it's crazy because. Obviously, I learn my friends and everything around, you know, and, you know, when I'm in the bank and I just then, it, I realised the gap when I was in the bank and I was, um, I opened um, an account for one of my, my close, I'm not going to say names, but one of my closest friends. And it was a debit card, a credit card, a savings account and started a business, started saving, saving some money and, they, you know, they needed to set themselves up because they didn't have that. Um, and then he said to me, probably about six months later, he's all, Nathan, I'm, I'm getting these statements and I'm putting money in, but they keep saying I'm missing my payment and I don't understand what's going on. I said, like, what do you mean? If you, you go, you, and I, I said, you, you, you've got a bill? He said, no, I promise you, I'm getting these, and they keep saying I'm missing payments. I, I, so I keep paying money in. I thought, like, well, you don't need to. What are you talking about? Just save your money. He goes, no, I keep getting them. And he showed me these, like, it was his credit card bill. So what he was doing, he was using his credit card and not his debit card, but not paying off the credit card oh because he just, thought that, he just thought that was the way. You see what I mean? So that, at that moment of time, everything just I went, whoa, hang on. So you assume people know that basic information between a debit and a credit card. Basic. This guy's a really clever guy and he didn't realise that. 
Now, I'm not saying that everybody's like that, but it made me realise, so I started to do stuff in, in primary schools and around schools in the areas, um, called life skills and, and things like that, where we speak to the children and we say, okay, this is a debit card, this is a credit card, this is a checkbook. Um, and Wait, we, is that the Barclays life skills? Yeah, so I did a lot with that, yeah, yeah. Is that, is, I, no way, that's crazy. That's crazy. I uh, I did some of those. I did some of those uh, Barclays life skills. I signed up when I was doing. Um, actually, you, you you'll know what this is. I was doing my Duke of Edinburgh gold, and so one of the ways in which I could get a couple of the, like kind of, uh, one of the ways I could look for some new skills to learn was they recommended the Barclays life skill program. Um, so I went on. I checked it out, and I really liked it actually. So I went and did a couple of the of the the courses um and yeah it was it was great i really really enjoyed that i think that was a great program it's good cool. it, it was it was wonderful it was, it was great and it's it, it's learning those basics which you know those life skills you forget that as i said i know it was a joke at the start but nobody nobody cares in a meeting that they're going to be asking unless i want to be a historian Nobody's going to ask me that in a job interview to tell me about the vikings or anything like that they want to know okay nathan um, tell me about yourself. When have you done this in your life? You know, relay that to that. If I started talking about children's stewards, they'd be like, "What's this guy? We're not the history museum, you know. What 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 are you doing?" So it it, it was really important. So we started to learn with them and the finance and and how they need to save and what they should do, and it was really well. And you know, I, I do that separately and still do that now. I do it in, in some schools and just help on the side. And I think that's something which is hugely important and i do believe and i don't know how they're going to do it and um, they do have to have that element of finance placed into school so people understand how to use their money it's 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 even if it was money management because if you can manage your money that's part of the battle and you have to understand how to manage your money um the, the two things you need to manage you need to manage yourself and you need to manage your money. That's that. And if you can do both of those things, that's wonderful because everything else just fits into it. It's like, you know, it, it intertwines. So if you can get taught how to do to manage yourself and then also taught how to manage your money, then it just sets up a, a fantastic generation of learning rather than people going through these crazy mistakes and getting into some kind of debts or not really understanding and getting into bad deals or making bad financial decisions. I'm not saying it's going to eradicate everything. Of course it isn't. But it's going to help people. Well, it's going to help big time because if you think about it, you know, it, it, knowing history facts from the 1600s and things that you're never really going to use again or the 1700s, that, that's not going to guide your life and not going to change your life. But think about what does guide this entire world is money. You know, this whole world runs on an economy and it runs on money. So why is it that we don't teach the number one thing that the world runs on? It, it, it's mad. And if you've got to just look at the situation, the unfortunate situation that, we, with the, that we're in at this moment in time with this virus going on. So that has opened everyone eye, everyone's eyes to see how important money and the economy is. Because now you see, stopping from March to where we are now and just reopening, has set countries back years. So three months has set countries back years. So it then made people realize, well, gosh, how important is my tax and my money and me going to the local shop and spending my money and where does that money go? It started to make people's minds tick and understand on a bigger scale how important money really is and the economy is and how it flows. So surely, you know, I guarantee, if the world said, right, we are not going to, I'm picking on history, I don't want to offend anyone, we're just using it as an example. But if the world said, right, we're not going to teach history for three months, okay, no history in the world, I don't think we're going to be in the same situation what we are at this moment in time if nobody understood money. If you said, said, right, nobody can learn anything about money, we would be in a far worse situation in three months than we would if they stopped history. And that's no disrespect to history, okay? I love my history teacher and people that history is really important, but I'm just giving an example where I believe finance should be brought to a level which is the same as history, geography, maths, English. It should be brought to Oh yeah, and and I don't I don't think anybody anybody would take offence at that in in the sense that you're 
you know, all, learning all subjects is important because learning people might Absolutely. find it as their yeah, passion yeah. you know yeah, people yeah. might love history and, and that be a hundred percent and when we're not saying that you, what you're saying is that you know it's it's not even on a par of history at the moment no, teaching people finance is not even close so it's like how is that how is that even a, a, the case right now um and that's i think that's something that i know i i, I mean i just know from mine and aaron's conversations that our generation has just woken up to it's like oh my goodness like this is this is crazy what's going on and and i would say it's a it's a global issue it's not it's not localized it's not just america not just western countries or whatever it's i would say it's definitely a global issue um and and interesting enough is is something that we've partnered up with on a, with a previous guest who's also uh, a financial advisor um here in the us um who has has created a course for the younger generations kind of 15 to 25 um and it's an online course you get your get your little certificate at the end with your um kind of the, the, your your financial literacy certificate um so yeah it, it's it's really it's it's a trend that we're starting to see with anybody we speak to in this field is that yeah that's that i see my job as also a bit of an education a bit of a teaching of my of of people um, and something Aaron definitely, you know, I don't think you've actually mentioned it with Nathan yet, but it's, it's something that you noticed being a finance major. So I completely agree with you, Rio. Uh, I, you know, one of the biggest things that I started advocating for was really helping people with any kind of financial needs in college and any kind of financial understanding. Um, I, I love to help people. I love making myself open to teach people about that kind of stuff. Uh, and that's why I participated in the in the investment club at my college for three years and then became the vice president and the president um, was all because I wanted to just help people. And one of the things that I, that I made sure was a big goal in our club and um, that I reiterated every time was ask me questions and tell me what you want to learn and we'll learn it. And it doesn't have to be necessarily about investing. It can be anything related to finance because finance is what runs this world. And when the world runs on that on that finance, you have to make sure that everyone understands it. And, you know, we money moves a lot faster now than it did 20, 30 years ago. And uh, you need to be ready for for those movements in our lives. So, yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And um, as we as we begin begin to kind of bring things as to a close here on the podcast, I just wanted to, to ask Nathan, is there kind of a final thing you want to either reach out to our community for or want our community to reach out to you for? Wow, okay, nice, nice, nice. And I, 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 want, I want to reach out to everybody in the community just to touch base and, you know, share ideas. So that's one thing I would love to do, share ideas and share mindsets and, and, and share stories and what they're doing differently, what's working, what's not, how are they feeling. It's nice to hear how people are feeling, you know, because we're human beings. And I think sometimes we can put up these massive walls and actually forget at the end of the day, you know, we are emotional beings. That's that's what we are. And if we weren't emotional, then we would we, it wouldn't make us who we are and the different people we are. So it's good to understand how people are feeling. So to reach out and just hear how people are feeling and what's good, what's not so good, that would be wonderful. Um, and also, what what would I I, I mean, for, for, for me, you know, I, I'm on a, on a route for happiness, I would say. And um, I always try and tell people, you know, people always say, oh, Nathan, how are you, how are you so happy? You know, even at times where everything's going down, everything's sad, how will you manage to stay happy? And I'm not I'm saying I'm not continuously happy because that'd be impossible. I am a person, I'm not an alien. Um, so that would be impossible. But to think happiness, and I'm going off of a, of a bit of a tangent, but uh, hear me out on this. I used to think happiness was like a product. So I used to think, Gosh, buying those shoes will make me happy. You know, getting to this point will make me happy. But then, as time went on, you know, I, bet I got the Nikes or the Nikes, and then, you know, a few weeks later, I'm upset. So why am I not happy still? And then over time, I just started to realise that this happiness is a process, isn't it? It's a process of 
life that we're on at this moment in time. So if everybody can try and keep everyone on some kind of happiness or hearing some story, because I think it's going to be impossible for everybody to be upset at the same moment in time. You know? <laughs> so in this whole community, you know, if everybody's upset, we're doing something wrong, bro. So I think even when people are down to, to hear a good story, to see a good story, will make you start to feel a bit better and real, make you realise, actually, yeah, I'm feeling pretty down now, but better times are going to come. And that happiness on the process becomes rather than happiness of the product. So a long way just to say, you know, if we can share stories, good and the bad, I think that will help because it will just pick people up when they need to be picked up. And I think sometimes when you post something, you know, that's why I do my quotes. I'm not saying everybody reads them, but hopefully if I, if I can quote, put something on a quote, and one person can relate to that, that thing that changed their mindset in the morning. then even if they haven't told me, then that's just, it just makes me feel good inside. So if we can share as much as possible, reach out to each other. I think that's the biggest thing. And then we can just continue to grow together, most definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. And so so then I'll ask you, what's your what's your final message for everybody? What's your what's your tagline you want to leave with? Oh, a tagline I got so many. I think <laughs> you know what? Okay, okay. So my the tagline is this because you're gonna go through this more in life than anything in the world. I can always say be happy, be this, be that, but this is what you are gonna experience. You are gonna experience failure. You are going to experience disappointment. You're going to experience upset. However, without all of those things, the wins, the happiness, the greatness, the jubilation doesn't exist. Any. How can you feel great if you don't know what it feels like to feel upset or sad? So when you fail at some, you know, your disappointment or you fall short, it's not the end. It's not the failure. You look at that and say, okay, I didn't make it this time. I didn't do it or something bad's really happened. But... I'm going to take the positives from that and it's going to set me up for something amazing. If you fail, if you don't beat something, if it's not as good as you think it's going to be, take the positive and then realise that's just setting you up for something wonderful in the future. That's what I'm going to leave you with today. I love that. I love that. And and then just... And just Nathan as well, I just, you know, you've mentioned a lot about LinkedIn and stuff on it, but where can people find you both for business purposes and just on a personal level? Yeah, on a personal. So you get me on my LinkedIn page, Nathan Waldron. Um, I'm sure you'll tag me into this. I'll be all my stuff on there. I've got my email, my mobile number, everything's on there. So I reach out on the business perspective, reach out on a personal perspective, answer all my messages. So yeah, reach out. It's absolutely fine. I don't mind breaking up and speak to people on zoom or anything pick it it's, it's absolutely fine i am open obviously time differences let's just work that out but and then, yeah I, we can get it all sorted but absolutely find me on linkedin on a business or a, a personal level absolutely fine absolutely and we can advocate that because that's how we found you nathan as well there you go there you go <laughs> Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on. We apologize for any of the connection issues. It's, it's my end and we're going to sort it out today, but we do apologize for any of that. But yeah, thanks so much for coming on, Nathan. We really appreciate your time. It was an awesome podcast. People can find this of, on YouTube and they can also find it here. Um, obviously, if you're listening to it, then you're here. So that's great. Um, but you can also find the podcast on YouTube and on all our social media. Um, but yeah, we, we really appreciate you coming on. And uh, yeah, we look forward to, to speaking again soon. Thank you very much, guys. Wonderful. Thank you again. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna finish as we always do. Cheers, Cheers for now. For now. As always, head over to the Instagram and Facebook at Gen Z Journey, where you can get an inside scoop of what's going on behind the scenes, as well as seeing the exciting guests that are coming on for that week. But above all else, thanks so much for listening. We really appreciate all your participation, and we're excited you're on this journey with us. See you next time.